<laughs> We're practicing getting our voice ready. What if that just got picked up? What do you think? Oh, all right, take two. Take two. Let's start over. <laughs> Everybody drink. Hey, welcome to Friday with Prof Sales and Carmen. That's me. Yes, and um, it is Friday, <laughs> isn't it? It's almost it's the last Friday of the month. It is, and the month is almost nigh. Yes, we are moving into a new month. So hope you guys are doing great out there in YouTube land. Um, so hopefully your uh, sales are good. So if they are or they aren't, leave it in the chat. Let us know how you're doing with your sales and so on. We always like hearing from you guys. And um, it's Friday. I keep I keep like it. <laughs> like, does that mean anything when you work for yourself as an entrepreneur? I don't know. Not so much. It doesn't really mean but anything. But it sounds really good. Yeah, it's supposed to be good, so we'll try to we'll try to pretend that. But anyway, but let's talk about other things that aren't Friday. We got like twenty nine minutes. Get on it. Twenty nine minutes. Well, twenty eight and some seconds now. We're already. Jeez, oh Pete. Math. <laughs> anyway, speaking of math. So a little quick story. I meet my friend Eric for lunch, and he goes and he watched the video earlier this morning. He goes, "Hey, you were in that shirt earlier today, weren't you?" And I was like, "Yes." <laughs> So advertising. Um, but anyway, I'm out and about in the community with the prof math. All right. So um, <clears throat> I don't know where I was going with any of that. 10 at 10 recap. What do you think, Karin? First week of 10 at 10. It has been so much fun. I, I, and I said it in the chat today. It's like better than coffee. Like it is my morning motivation. I love it. Yeah. If you guys haven't been watching, Every day at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, this past week, we've come on with a little tidbit for about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. 15 was kind of a long one today, actually. And um, Karen's been doing some of them. I've been doing some of them, and it's been a lot of fun. Did you say long one or long-winded? Long-winded. <laughs> long today was a long one, actually. No, today was a long one. You long were long-winded. Long uh, whatever. <clears throat> anyway, but it's it's a it's sort of the yin and the yang as you say, yeah? Yeah. So it's it's a my side is more newbie beginner, just very basic stuff, so be gentle people. And then you've taken this great approach to well, besides the math, right? Just some sort of higher level stuff. I don't know, in a way that even I can understand. <laughs> there you yeah. Go. And you know, guys, um, we're we're still open to suggestions for that show. Karen's actually got she's got all hers planned out. I mean, she's got like eight more, and they're already set up, and she's ready to go with them. But uh, mine are still kind of a work in progress. I've been taking these, you know, these financial topics around reselling and trying to break them down in a way that I think makes a little more sense. Hopefully, it does. Lots of great feedback. Tens, they're you know the last. I guess the last five days we've done them. We won't do them on the weekend, just so you guys know. But we will be back Monday with another one, which I think will be you. <clears throat> I believe it will be. It'll be you. So um, that'll be pretty cool. But um, we're really enjoying it, enjoying talking to you guys. I'm sorry we don't have a lot of time to chat during the 10 and 10. We're trying to each, like if she's doing hers, I'm chatting and vice versa. Um, so that's the best we can do with that because in 10 minutes, you really got to move fast to cover any content. I mean, it just flies by. So if you look at uh, these 10 at 10s as sort of a time capsule for uh, resellers' future, uh, if you have a question, put it in the comments of that video. Um, or if you want to reach out to us individually, certainly send an email. We are taking all of the chats and keeping them. We're sort of um, archiving them. Uh, but if it's something that could benefit somebody else, you know, we're all about informing and teaching. Um, and so pay it forward, you know, share, right. you know, your question. There are no needless questions and there's got to right. be someone else with the same question. So consider putting it out there and we'll, right. we can answer it. And, and I've already done that a bunch of times. It's been, it's been grand. Yeah. And on the back side of this guys, some of you know this already <clears throat> or may have guessed, but my plan is, is to have, you know, a true business and accounting expert on in the near term to talk about some of these issues and questions, answer your questions, and just generally provide some general knowledge. I find there's a lot of fear and ignorance in our community of revolving around, you know, like accounting terms, bookkeeping, business structure, profit and loss statements. 
just really basic stuff, guys. And I am no expert. I don't have a business education, but I've been self-taught. And I think you can self-teach yourself virtually everything you need to know to at least get started with your business. Um, and after that, you know, you're probably going to need some professional advice going forward just to handle some things that are going to come up. But we're really excited about the series and I've been enjoying it. And without <clears throat> giving too much away, what an opportunity it would be to glean real information from a real accountant. <laughs> <laughs> there and, we go. And we don't have to say, I'm not an accountant or right. I just do it. So we're very, very excited um, at what is to come and what's going to, yep. what's already in the works for that. So. All right, so next topic, and by the way, there there is a show topic, but um, <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to that in just a moment. <laughs> yeah, there really is eBay and the purge. So There's I wanted to share with you guys if you if you were part of this channel back in December, December, November of last year, you might remember we did a day where Karn and I took you through a hundred listings in a day. Um, they were all jeans. <laughs> It was a long day. It was like nine hours to get through everything, right? Live and in, live in real time. We recorded the yeah. whole thing. And we shared a lot of information with you guys as we went, what we were doing, why we did certain things and so on. And I've been keeping track, as you guys know, I'm, like, I'm apt to do. You keep track of stuff? True story. I've been keeping track of those 100 listings for all this time. And I used to update this a little bit more frequently, but as you know, the, the sales from that have kind of slowed down. I'm just doing it a little sporadically, but I thought I would share it with you today. So I'm going to screen, uh, share the screen for just a moment. Well, and there's actually been a bump in the hundred because when we talked about yeah. it last. So this is how many days ago we, we did that. That was November 16th of 2016 and 2016. And we, it was 153 days ago. We have sold 0.52 pair per day, which I know this looks a little weird over here. It's because I changed the way where I recorded my sales. That's why there's a number here too. But we've re we've sold 85 of them, guys. Just so you know, <laughs> um, that was a total of a gross total of two thousand and sixty-five dollars, um, and that's an eighty-five percent sell through in basically less than half a year. Average selling price is twenty-four dollars and thirty cents. <clears throat> And just so you remember, there was nothing special about these 100 jeans. They were just randomly selected. They weren't great. They weren't terrible. They just happened to be what we had next on deck. So I just wanted to share that with you guys so you know kind of where we're at. We got 15 to go. We'll definitely do another show. We might do one more between now and then. We'll definitely do one when we sell the 100th. Yes. Um, I kind of keep track each day when I see – I kind of know about what item numbers those are, so I kind of keep track when I see ones in that range that sell. But I just want to share that with you. And we're back, sort of. I never left. Oh, you never left. Yeah, I've been here the whole time. <clears throat> All right. Um, so, yeah, so there you go. All right, now, that does bring us to the show topic. I feel like we should have music for the show topic, like a... Like thriller some music? some guy with a booming voice like, the show topic. Oh, I thought you meant because we referenced sort of a movie title when we call it The Purge. Oh, yeah, we did. I've not seen that movie. Whatever. Um, There'll be no blood involved. Hope, well, I did cut my finger, but that doesn't count. Hmm. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you did that. I was like, I had no idea. All right, so purging. Uh, all right. So, Karin, I, I got back from the post office and, and lunch a little while ago. And Karin, what did you what did you say to me when I came in? Uh, I don't remember. What did I say? Oh, well, you mean when you first walked show. in? Oh, you mean when I said we have to go through and count them so you can yeah. do Yeah. Or what did you say this morning? You texted yeah. me actually. Yeah. I said we're we're going to just get rid of them. We're done. We're going to purge them. We have we have this pile. So this pile sort of developed. We didn't have a male mannequin. And you can't mm. put a man's dress shirt on a <clears throat> Girl mannequin, okay? <coughs> Boots just, are an issue. Uh, well, go figure. And flat lay wasn't working, so this pile began to develop. And the mannequin got here, what, a week ago? Maybe Probably. Two that weeks sounds ago. about right. Um, and nothing so. happened to the pile. Um, and so you've really been like, you know, all 
I hate the pile. Flemped about it. So I fi finally said, we said we were going to address it before the end of the month. And I finally <clears> said, you know what? Let's just get rid of it because there's a school of thought, especially in buying bulk or the way you buy certain things. Um, just at some point, you got to let it go. And in this instance, it's stuff that, you know, let it go. Let, let it go. That's like ice. I, I, we should fill with snow. Anyway, for people with little, without little kids, they won't understand. So, you know, our model is not buy a thousand things at the outlets and then come back and list everything for, right. you know, nothing. Um, we, we're just not, we're set up. So we're, or we're going to talk about the three things, why we're doing it this way. We're just not set up to sell in bulk at a lower price. And what happens is whenever we get a new thing that we've not ever sold before, there's a learning curve. So you didn't want to do it. It was just, you know, I didn't. <clears throat> True story. We're still the you're still the jeans guy, right? Do what you like. We've talked about that before. Do, do what, what you love, what you're good at. Do what you know. And so the, so yeah, so I pulled all, it was eight buckets. It's roughly 50 items. Yep. Um and there's some pretty cool stuff in there that we're actually not going to purge. We're going to finally list like that wetsuit that I found, the brand new wetsuit. Yeah. Was in a bucket with a shirt uh. a bunch of shirts. That should have been listed, right? Um but it just got put there and we're yeah. thinking, you know, we had great intentions. So to Karen's point, um, these were not items I was fond of. I didn't think there was a lot of profit in them. They sort of fit in with the bin strategy that we were employing, I guess at one point, but it was not a huge, uh, not a huge win for us. Mm -mm. You know, I mean, nothing wrong with the bin strategy. Don't get me wrong, but we found that with the bin strategy, and by the bin strategy, I don't mean sort of our staples of like denim or even maybe shoes now, but I mean like, you know, the one-off shirts, blouses, the random pair of pants, shorts, what have you. Not saying they won't sell, not saying you won't make profit. The problem we were running into is just space. We started, we started running into an issue with being able to store all these items in a way that reasonably made sense, we could get to quickly, and I'll admit, you know, the bins that I have over there that have a, um, a bunch of stuff from the bins in them are not organized. <laughs> and that's very unlike me. They're not in good, you know, when you go in, they're not in sequential order. So you can find the item really quickly. You kind of got to dig through. It's like, you know, like 15 items in there. And I think that just spoke to, it was just a strategy that didn't fit. It was a square peg in the round hole. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it just didn't. It just wasn't working. Um, and I would argue they're not really moving that quickly either. And I don't think it's a pricing issue or keyword issue. It's just that with that particular strategy, you know, unless you're just finding killer brands, it you really gotta just you, you really gotta be able to um, flip some volume. And that was not conducive to our inventory status as well as our mindset. Also, two guys. Um, this is the thing. When you go and you, and I talked about this on the show the other day, when you go and you want to move into a new area, a new niche, if you will, nothing wrong with that. It's a learning curve. You got to learn some things and so on. But what I found was every time we walk into a Ben's store and we started going through not jeans, not shoes, not even maybe blazers, not things that we already have a lot of knowledge about, or at least a, a decent chunk, I found I was pulling items with no real rhyme or reason to it or throwing back items with no real rhyme or reason. And the reason for that is, is because trying to niche into that many different types of items with the literally just hundreds and hundreds of brands that are out there. I mean, I didn't have any way to know what was good and what wasn't. And I didn't see the value to me for us in going and learning about, 300 different brands of dresses or 400 different brands of shirts. Well, and it's just, it's not for you. It's not for me. It does work for some people. You know, our friend Tiffany has a 5,000 plus item yep. store and you know, she's a, a machine. She's got a memory like a, a she's a learned vault. it over like 13 years. Yeah. It didn't happen at night mm -hmm. or one night. And so, you know, we're not afraid to, one, be the guinea pigs for the community um, and try new things. You know, there's nothing that frustrates me more than somebody that has an opinion about something that right. hasn't walked a mile in that person's shoes. So we tried it. Um, 
Can it work? Yes. Will it work for us long term? Nope. So lesson learned, moving on. And there were some things that we gle yeah. gleaned from that experience. Too. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're still <clears throat> going to the outlets. We're still buying certain things. We're just not necessarily grabbing all the thingies when we go <laughs> um, because it's just not conducive to our model. Right. You know, and you can't. We want to make money just like you guys do. We got bills to pay. We have vacations we want to go on. We have needs just like everybody else. Um, but we're evolving all the time. So we want to fine tune how we make our money. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, th there's not. And I think, you know, the wise business person hopefully can learn when something isn't a good fit for you. Now you have to give it a try. You have to actually, mm -hmm. you know, implement, come up with some sort of strategy and implement it and see where it takes you. But I found that it was distracting us from our core businesses too much. Mm -hmm. That was a big problem for me because when I, you know, when I pick up, you know, this, this pair of Joe jeans, ah! <laughs> I know I'm knocking down a reflector. When I pick up this pair of Joe jeans at a bins, I'm going to pay about $2 and five cents for it by the weight. Mm -hmm. And I know that this particular pair will sell for about 20, 20 to $22 plus shipping somewhere in there. So, you know, a good return on investment for sure, a good a good multiple of my costs, my cost of goods. If you watched that earlier today, <laughs> you'll know what I mean. But when I pick up a shirt like this or even like this minus the prof math, um, I don't know what it's going to sell for. I don't know if it has any value or not. So now I got to look at the brand and I got to go in and do completes and solds and all that good stuff. And then I got to think about, you know, the shipping and how quick it'll turn. And meanwhile, while I'm doing that, I'm missing another pair of these. Now I can spend more time. We could spend more time sourcing. Time is money people. But at the same time, if you're pulling out 40, 50 items out of a bin store, you got to go list them, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't stay. I mean, you could stay there all day, I guess, if that's your strategy, but we've never really liked that strategy. And, and it doesn't work for shoes because they don't pull out the shoes often enough. And plus it's a mad rush for the shoes. So we would be, you know, if we spent like a four to six hour day at the bin store, God help us. I mean, I don't know how you do that, but we would not get the kind of quantity I think that you might imagine. You know why I'm laughing, right? Don't you? No. So the lady that gave, so we ran into another reseller who, you know, most of the time when we meet folks out and about, it's a friendly interaction. Um, but I had a lady give me the stink eye yesterday. <laughs> we did. True story. She got it, not me. She was smart though, what she was doing. Tell, tell them what she was doing. Well, you, you mentioned we just can't stay at the outlets all day and wait for every new table to come out, every new table to come out. And she actually purposefully moved all of the shoes off of the bottom row onto it because our Goodwills in particular, <clears throat> they will not put out new shoes unless there are empty places. Right. Uh, which makes sense. Um, and we confirmed this when we, you know, we grabbed all the thingies, all the shoes one day and went to go look them up in the moment. It was about, I don't know, 10, 15 pair. And when we went back, there was nowhere to put them because they had already restocked. Um, but she had, a, you know, she, there were a couple of, I asked if, if it was her cart ultimately, cause she just kept staring me down. And when that happens. And we had just seen her at another store. Yeah, we did. Um, and when that happens, I just kind of want to, I, I get in trouble because I just kind of, <laughs> I just want to play with the person at that point. I'm like, really? Life's too short. Um, but she did. So now I've committed her to my memory. So we will give her a wide berth the next time. Did her strategy work though with moving all the shoes up so the store would come fill it? Yes, but she ended up, yes, but how long are you going to sit there? Because she mm, literally sat story. in one of the, furniture chairs and waited and waited on the employees to bring out the shoes. I would say that that bottom row would hold maybe what? 40 pair, 30, 50 pair, uh, 30 four, to 40, 30 to 40 maybe. Yeah. So uh, maybe that's worth waiting for. I don't know. Well, one, like for one pair of shoes. Yeah. It's like what, that's what you got to think about. Like if you're going to sit there and wait for them to bring out, let's say 35 more pair. We'll just split the difference between 30 and 40. How many are you going to pull out of that that are worth it? And how long are you going to have to wait? Right. And I don't know how long she would have waited. I mm -hmm. suspect she might have waited 30 minutes to an hour. At least. I would think. 
might not be worth it. I don't know. But here's the thing. <coughs> so everybody has their own way. Like we find listing every day bumps us up. Right. Uh, Lauren finds a certain dollar amount listing every day is what works for her. So maybe, and not to you know criticize, because yeah. we don't know, um, but maybe it's worked for her. And maybe she has the time mm -hmm. to sit there for half an hour. And maybe yep. that one pair of dance goes is what's going to make a difference for is her. Is that what so. she put back? Or did she no, that's this? what was in her cart. That's what I was coveting. Coveting. Yes. Car Karen will steal stuff out of your cart. No, I she won't. <laughs> it will I'm just not. Teasing. But uh, she might. But if you turn your back long enough. <clears throat> hey, guys, a couple other quick uh, screen share. Another screen share I'm going to do for just a moment just to show you some numbers as of late because we haven't really done too many of those lately. And this is just some jeans metrics. Um, so at the start of the month, I had about 914 listed. Um my i've listed 190 more uh, 190 more this month and only sold 90 so far so big drop off from march to april so i'm kind of investigating that and why that is exactly um this this is the average sales price which is actually up and that might be why i've pushed my pricing up a bit so i may end up making the same amount of profit on less sales we'll see i still got to make about 300 dollars in profit between now and the end of the month three days eh probably a little below it. So I might have to adjust my pricing back down a little bit next month just to sort of capture a little bit more profit. You know, this is always kind of some things you can mess around with. Um, shoes, we've actually done great. We've listed 37 this month to go with 12 last month is 49. So we're about halfway to our goal of 100, but we have sold two and four, which is six. So we've sold a few as well. But shoes are great. Um, you can see Shoe average sale price about thirty three fifty, and the average net per shoe is about twenty seven thirty after the shipping. So we couldn't be happier with shoes. I mean, they're great, no question about it. Um, definitely a definitely, I think a right place to pivot. Two is that a word? I don't know if that's pivot. even a word. Pivot. All right. Um, what else we got? Oh, uh, guys, if you're enjoying this video, um, let us know about it. Leave a comment down below after this video post, or if it's a question, we'll try our best answers. And what else should they do, Karin? They should smash the like button, prof. I have no idea. It's always a cross between Popeye and somebody. I don't know. Earlier, I was trying to do the Godfather. That was pretty sad. Oh, just do it. No, I can't do it. <laughs> you have to I, do it. It was I, so funny. I got to get in my right voice. Um, I can't. No, I can't do it. <laughs> All right. So, um, but yeah, smash the like button, guys. We appreciate it. Also, um, if you have a question, we're going to take a few questions here in this back seven or eight minutes. Um, type the word question or question marks in front of your question just so we know it is a question. <laughs> yes. And hi to everybody. <clears throat> yes. Hi to everybody. Again, about 90 people watching, which is awesome. I mean, that's great. That's a great turnout. Um, we got one more quick topic to talk about. Yard sales. <gasps> so we haven't actually been to one yet, have we? That one weekend, no, uh, it was a bust. No, we really didn't. No. It really it didn't pay off. But my favorite all-time church rummage sale is tomorrow morning. 7 a.m. look out. I'm there. Be there or be square, prof. Yeah, and it's literally so close we could walk to it. I mean, we're not going to because that'd be dumb. But it's very close, and we had great luck there last year. We found some really great... Um, that's where Grab All the Thingies <clears throat> comes from, honestly, because we were in another chat talking about how I... Little old girly me is literally flanked by these big guys in the electronics section, and I grab the DVD player, the VCR, the mm -hmm. remote control, and I literally made this pile and I protected. She did. She did. We, and we come. pulled a bunch of stuff out of that. Um, we got most of it. That was just awesome. So and that particular sale is a win-win for everybody because it's a this trip. Uh, this trip. This church does it every year for their Haiti missions. So we're it benefits us because we buy stuff. It benefits them because they're doing this wonderful work in Haiti. And then the third thing that Ben, my son, has already considered, when we drove by and saw the sign the other day, uh, he's like, oh, got to get my suitcase for my own Haiti's mission, Haiti mission trip. So, yeah, he leaves his suitcase there when mm -hmm. he leaves, which is pretty cool. So we're already planning on stuff that we can get for us, too. Yeah, because so. we bought a suitcase there for, what, five bucks, ten bucks? Yeah, the, and it was... It was it was nice. It was a big... You could like, put a body in it. Yeah, it was too big to be a carry-on. Like, it had to be, you know, one that you had to check. 
Um, there was a question or two that came in I want to answer before we wrap up here in a minute. Okay. Mike Raleigh said, question, do you have a list of good shoes to look for? And Mike, I'm glad you asked that question. Let me tell you why. This kind of goes back to part of the reason we've moved away from the tchotchke stuff at the bins. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do have some brands that we've started to learn, but the way that our particular thrifts display shoes and able to go through them quickly because I don't think I have one here, but because they lay them like this on a shelf and, and like the top of the shoe is facing out, you can literally walk by and see the brands. Mm -hmm. if, if it's, you know, inside the, the sole or inside the, the heel, um, which allows you to go through very quickly and see them. You don't have to take a lot of time. Whereas if it's a bins, for instance, and a bunch of stuff is just thrown in a heap, you've literally got to pick up every piece and kind of look at it, which is never going to be as quick as just using your eyes. Um, but we do have a list of um, shoes that we've started kind of learning. But man, we are still such neophytes with shoes. I am just not apt to give anybody very much shoe advice right now. Um, our buddy Tino has got a great channel, Tino the Soul Advisor, and he's got a lot of great info about brands. And I'm actually getting ready to reach out to him about my listings to see how I'm doing. <laughs> so I would definitely check out his channel. Um, somebody else had a question. Uh, jean brands. How, how do I learn more about jeans? Watch jean videos. We have lots of them. Uh, and if you want to know what's selling on eBay, do a comparative lookup. And there's lots of ways that you can do that. I mean, it's easy. Just go to, like you would comps, solds and completeds, and mm -hmm. go from there. Yeah. And look for the brands on eBay that are the most popular. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but that's a place to start. Like if they're popular on eBay, that means there's a market for them. Now you may or may not be able to sell them depending on how cheap you can get them and what they sell for. That's a different story, mm -hmm. but it's a place to start. Like when you learn the big ones like Levi's, for instance, you know, it's probably arguably the most widespread, most sold brand in the world, arguably you're going to, that's going to help you because you're going to start learning about Levi's and some things to look for or not. So it gives you some knowledge. You don't have to start with all the little niche brands that, you know, there's only 12 listings on all of eBay. You know, you're, you'll learn some of those as you go, but start with the biggies first and kind of go down from there. Um, eBay filters uh, and sorting options are your friend. I mean, there's really no limit to what you can find out, glean from just tweaking those uh, just a little bit in your favor and how what the information is out there, I promise. JR asks, um, how do you combine shipping and eBay? The shipping policy when you create one asks for shipping and each additional what should be put in the each, each additional? Um, I think you're talking about creating like a shipping template, or maybe you're talking about just how much extra to add to each item. Um, you could just add that on if you want. I mean, if you charge $5 to ship something first class, each additional could be $5, or you could do some sort of discount if you wanted. Um, I had that with a very light, uh, funny story. I have a very lightweight item I sell and I have a, a quantity of it. And I've had it on sale sometimes and sometimes it hasn't. Funny thing, somebody bought six of them the other day, um, going to the same location. And because, and it was on sale for like 15% off. Today, I sold one at regular price. But because I could sell the other six and, you know, shrink down, and they're very, very light, like way less than an ounce because I could shrink down the, uh, the shipping costs and I was just shipping one package to one person with six items, my shipping per item came out to like 42 cents an item, which is nothing. The one that was 15% off, actually I made more profit on than the one I sold at full price <laughs> because the shipping was cheaper for each of those six. So sometimes you can find little, uh, you know, little um, niches like that where you can make a little extra money with shipping. <clears throat> uh, Vintage Philly, we talk about balance uh, in our relationship all the time. Um, not enough time to go into it, um, but you just have to have space and balance and communication to make it work with your significant other. Yes. Um, that and pillows to throw on occasion. Those aren't pillows. Mo movie reference. Movie reference. <laughs> See if anybody gets that one. That's a little more. Those are <clears throat> pillows. Uh, Hurley on point uh, was asking about suits, and somebody said, yeah, measurements, picture quality, brand. Suits are a long tail item um, in general. Suits are not like a quick flip. 
the positive the positive part about that is usually you're going to get a good sale price for them. I mean, they're higher higher price as far as clothing goes, especially for used even for used ones. So I would say, you know, take that take that with a grain of salt and just say, all right, if I put a suit up here, it might sit for six months. You know, and it is what it is. Oh, Mike got the reference first, I think. Someone said Tommy Boy. That was not a bad guess. Um, but no, it was planes, trains, and automobiles. Steve Martin, John Candy. Classic. Check it out if you've never seen it. Old one, oldie but a goodie. Um, let's see, what else? We might have time for one more question. I, I missed the question and now I can't find it. Uh, it was, oh, it was back here. Let's see. I know it's like I'm trying to like scroll through and find it. Uh, oh, Rhino asked about the post office 5630 form to give to his local post office, so they only scan one sheet. I'm not a great help on that because I don't stand there while they scan them in. I, t I actually just drop them off in a box. You know, here's the thing about that. If you're turning some volume with your business or you're, you're reselling, at some point you're not going to get too crazy about any one package and what happens with it. Could it get scanning late? Yep. Could you get a late shipment ding? Yep. Could it get lost? Yep. But it's one package out of hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands. You're not going to get that upset about it. When you're only selling one or two items a month, it matters a lot. <laughs> But when, but if you're selling any kind of volume, I wouldn't get too crazy about it. I would just, I mean, I don't know how everyone's post office. We just drop them off. Well, some people have trouble with their post office. Yes. And we are blessed to have, for the most part, post employees that do their job. Um, but other places will have trouble with all some, number of things. Somebody asked about prom dresses. I feel like that's your department for five bucks worth getting. Well, the chat seems to support that if they're in good shape, yes. Have we ever sold? I don't think we've sold a prom dress. No. I would know nothing about that, but it seems like that would be a very time-specific part of the year, like right now. Uh, prom season. Yeah, which is right now, right? Ish. I think prom season is right now. -ish. It's, yeah. it's uh, May or June. Or, no, I guess it's May. It's like there's proms are already start. Anyway, we digress. Seasonality. So, um, anyway. All right. Uh, let's see. All right, guys. It's 2.32, so half an hour. We're there. It's time. That time So if you liked it, smash it. Uh, if you have questions, uh, put them, especially if they're good, uh, if there's something that someone else may ask as well, please consider putting it in the comments of the video once it uploads. Uh, you can always send us an email or reach us, you on Instagram or Facebook yep. at Prop Sales. Prop Sales. Uh, it's Friday, so go out there, whatever you're doing, be safe, have fun, consider paying it forward. Yep. Because uh, that's what it's all about, right? All right, guys, have a great weekend, and we will see you all back here on Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with doing another Reseller 101. All right, guys, that's going to do it for now. Prof Sales. And Karin. Saying good, good sales, sales to, to you. you.